and talk to you and you know each of their characteristics and their personalities. It's, um, it's really weird. The blurring of reality and illusion. It is, yeah. We, we call it feebleitis. Oh dear. The important thing, thing is uh, to give life to the puppets, to make a special personality in every puppet. Uh, we have to think about how the actor voice it is, and how the puppet is made, and then we have to, to start working. How's the puppet going to move? How's the feelings the puppet has inside, and what sort of situations we can create with the puppet? And we start giving life to the puppet, I think, is the most important thing. Does he come alive? Oh, yes, he comes alive very, very easily because he has these wonderful, wonderful big eyes. They have a lot of expression. And he has a wonderful face that is really cute. And these tiny, tiny little fingers, <laughs> then you can create more of this. He does have a personality of his own, doesn't he? Oh, yes. He's, uh, when I grabbed this puppet the first time, I just started working with him, and I, in, I don't know, one hour, I just could move it. Fell in love with him. Yes. <laughs> It's only at the end of the day, when doing the rushes, that Jackson and the crew finally see what's worked. <laughs> but getting a couple of feebles to talk and smoke cigars is relatively simple. Uh, what's much more difficult is to get a puppet to, to walk into a room, open the door, walk across to the other side and, and sit at a desk. I mean, that is so difficult because if you were doing it with, with humans if you were shooting a normal drama you'd probably just do it in one camera shot stick the camera there they come and walk across and sit down but with puppets it's impossible to make them do that type of movement in one shot i mean because so you've got to split something that simple up into two or three different camera angles and you've got to shoot a separate shot of them walking into the door where you have to maybe take the floor out and get them in and then you cut because it's as far as their puppeteer's arm can reach you can't get any any further so then you have to take more of the floor out and rig a dolly so that you can wheel him across the room as he makes the puppet walk across. But then he can't get up into the chair because you'd see the arm that's stuck up the puppet. So then you've got to change your angle and hide the arm with a desk or something else, a prop, and then he sits up. So to do s the most simple action, the most basic sort of action, is um, um, it's just time consuming and difficult. <laughs> Crisis on our hands. Winyard's killed his assistant. Our oh, bees out of action. Sid's routine is a complete write-off. We've got no alternative but to reinstate my song. No! Bitch, I'm sorry, but the show is in a shambles. This is a family show, for Christ's sake. The network would never allow it. But it's a superb piece of song and dance. I know it'll go down. <laughs> Well, let's get into this scene, Peter. This is the, um, we've had a lot, of, lot, there's a lot of trouble with the old... Yeah, well, this, is, this, is, this is a scene that I really dreaded shooting. I oh, know, that I dreaded coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we just had enormous difficulty with these um, strings because I was trying to get um, full-length shots of Sebastian. You can, and just, I mean, all the time I was seeing the strings through the camera, but I yeah. just hope like hell that we, we're going to get a bit that... Um, well, you, you sort of cut enough shots so we can get them up on the desk, all right? When we come to edit the movie, it's the, um, the first time that the magic slowly starts to filter back for me. It's been broken down into tiny little fragments, shots that by themselves are just meaningless, but you finally start to see it join back together again, and it comes, you know, hopefully comes close to the um, original idea that you conceived. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to hold the moon back there and we're going to tape the black cloth up and we're going to do a shot of the Feebles doing the closing number, meet the Feebles two verses. Then we're going to take the moon back down, rig the machine gun up, put Heidi on it, pull it back, set the bomb, release, bomb releases and away we go. Actor Danny Mulherin doesn't usually get about like this. He's one of the script writers for Feebles, but he's also the man in Heidi's life. It's hot work wearing a hippopotamus, clothes or no clothes, so the crew turn a blind eye when he rehearses naked. OK, get, grab the shooter. Got the shooter, Johnny? All right. 
right up. Yeah, I've got to see the line there. It's down the line, that black tape down the middle. Can someone hold the gun? Heidi is the strangest role Mulheran has played and the most difficult to shake off. How on earth to get out of this thing? Eh? Uh, head first. Right, right. Uh, pull it there. Uh, oh, it. Gently. Oh, it's heavy. You good. Why don't you sit yeah. down? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Oh. What's, what's it like being stuck inside that? big blob of foam rubber all day. It's, it's smelly, and that gives you a real pain in the neck, especially when you're horizontal, because it sort of pulls back. But it's, it's quite good. It smells like rancid butter. Oh, yeah. I've been wearing it for about a couple of months now, so it's rather, rather <laughs> aromatic. <laughs> unpleasant. Yeah. How do the other guys on the show treat you when you're uh, dressed up in one of your more sexy numbers? Oh, the sexy numbers? Well, it's, it, it changes. When I'm in a sort of regal outfit, they sort of, I've got an entourage of people I sort of want to around, and hundreds of people follow me. But when I'm one of the outfits which are sort of more revealing well uh, you know people leap on top of me basically which is sort of rather unnerving well you've got to just take it in the stride really there's not a lot i can do i can't actually tell who it is <laughs> i think i think it was the director at one stage to go uh, some sort of i think i'm a mother figure <laughs> In a scene that could be called Heidi's Revenge, the hippo triggers a Peter Jackson special of splatter magic and puppet gore. Well, you said it was going to be easy. You know, I do want to make the sort of films that I like watching, so what I had to try and do with the Feebles is make the, the sort of puppet film that I would like to watch. You know, if I had, had to go and sit down and watch a puppet film for an hour and a half, you know, what would I like to see? And so that's really what I've tried to do with the Feebles. Hi. Oh, yeah? Oh. down here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that'll do, Richard. Good vomit work. Okay, we'll shoot. Stand by on the carrot. And action carrot. Lower it down. Yeah, that's pretty good speed. No, you got shots on the ones? I haven't got some. I will get the ones down, so they're about I don't want to sound grand and big-headed and stupid, but I mean, I think it will do the film industry good. Um, I think that there's a certain image of, of a New Zealand film, you know, in the new audiences in here, in new, you know, in the um, public's mind in New Zealand and overseas, I guess, to an extent, um, of, you know, being quite naturalistic um, types of movies, you know, slices of life rather than slices of cake. And I hope that with... Um, bad taste and, and now with the feebles that um, that people can see that you know that we can make slices of cake in New Zealand just as well.